This is Sharon Gable and I'd like to do a brief tutorial on synclines to help students in introductory physical geology classes in college or high school earth science classes understand synclines a little better. Especially I'd like to help the students figure out on a geologic map whether or not they're looking at a syncline. So let's start with undeformed sedimentary rocks. We have the land surface up here at the top of this cross section and that's uh, above a layer of sandstone. Below that there's a shale formation. This brickwork pattern down here represents a limestone rock formation. And on the bottom, these kind of tilted brick patterns indicate that this is a dolostone formation. What happens if we subject these rocks to compression? Maybe because there are two plates colliding in this region. If these rocks are squeezed like that, like these arrows indicate, one possibility is that the rocks will fold and form this trough-like fold or syncline. Our syncline has all of our rock formations down warped in the center. That means that our youngest rock formation, the sedimentary rock, will be exposed on the surface at the center of this fold. And if we go to the left and hike out onto the limb of the syncline, we'd be then hiking over the older shale and then we'd go over the even older limestone rock formation and way out here to the left we'd be walking over that oldster that was down at the bottom here, our Dola stone. And we'd see that same succession of rocks if we hike from the fold axis over to the right. We'd start out on the sandstone, hike over the older shale, and we'd keep walking over the limestone and Dola stone that are even older. So one rule to remember is that when you're looking at a syncline, the youngest rock will be exposed along the axis of the syncline. And as you look away from the fold axis, you'll see progressively older rocks exposed farther out on the limbs of the syncline. It can also help to look at a block diagram using a tool like Visible Geology, which you can get to by Googling Visible Geology or copying this URL into your browser. Let's have a look at Visible Geology. Click Visualize. And the great thing here is you can use block diagrams to understand what you're seeing in a cross-section view and what you see on a map view. So let's have a look at a block diagram of a syncline. And let's make it full screen. Here's our cross-section view that we were looking at before, only here we have a lot more layers and they're colorful. If we kind of tilt this block diagram down, we can see what is exposed at the surface of the earth. We have all of these folded rocks down below, folded into this kind of gutter-like shape, this syncline. So erosion wears down through all these rocks over millions of years and exposes the different rock layers at the surface. This is our surface view or map view up here. Remember, we're going to see the youngest rock exposed along the center of our syncline, even on this map view. And if we go away from the axis in either direction, we'll see progressively older rocks. You can see those age relationships better when you have the stack of rock layers folded into the syncline in that cross-section view. So here's our map view that we were looking at in Visible Geology, and I just want to draw the fold axis. Just want to draw the fold axis on our map here. Trying to draw a dashed line down the center of the pink in the middle there. That's our fold axis. The thing about a syncline is because the rocks were tilted into that kind of gutter shape, let's look at that again, gutter shape, right? 
we have our fold axis in the cross section view like this and see on the limbs of our syncline the rocks are dipping toward the fold axis if we were to drop a marble onto any of these rock layers on either side of the fold axis because of the way those rock layers are tilted toward the center the marble would roll toward the center because in a syncline the limbs of the syncline dip toward the fold axis so I'm going to draw on my strike and dip symbol over there on the left hand limb of the syncline and another one over here on the right hand limb indicating with our little dip indicators on our strike and dip symbol that the limbs of the syncline dip toward the fold axis. So on a geologic map, you might see this repeated a succession of rock formations on the map. Pink, not repeated, but then on either side of it, you have blue, lavender, yellow, light brown, each of them indicating a different rock formation. That's an indication that there's a fold in the subsurface. So when you can find strike and dip symbols on either side of the fold, you can check those out. If the dip symbols are indicating that the limbs are dipping toward the fold axis on either side of the fold, that is a syncline in the subsurface. If we didn't have any strike and dip symbols on the map, if we instead were given a key, or legend for the map that indicated the relative ages of the rock layers. Remember, in a syncline, we're going to see the youngest rock along the fold axis and progressively older rocks out on the limbs of the fold. So in our legends or key to symbols on a geologic map, it typically lists the different rock formations shown on the map from oldest at the bottom to youngest at the top. Okay, so those are two ways that you can identify a syncline on a geologic map. I hope this helps you understand synclines a little bit better and also helps you recognize synclines on a geologic map.